Nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Uh, today, uh, we will hear about two saints, uh, St. Zephyrinus, Pope and Martyr, uh, whose Mass I am celebrating, commemorated for today, uh, but also St. Genesius. He is a martyr and a comedian in ancient Rome, and so we're going to hear about both of these saints. Uh, so Pope Zephyrinus... Uh, brought the church through uh, some very tumultuous times uh, during the persecution of Septimus Severus, and that was uh, around the, right, right after the turn of the third century, so 202 to 219. He was pope for 17 years uh, during some very uh, difficult times. Uh, and he uh, defended the faith so well uh, and was su under such constant attack uh, that, that, that um, both from inside and outside, enemies of the church attacked him from the outside, and those uh, even from within uh, were attacking him as well. Uh, he brought it uh, successfully through. Um, he was such a strong defender uh, against uh, her heresy that even the enemies, the enemies of the church, said that he was the principal defender of Christ's divinity. Uh, this would not stop, however, uh, those from within the church uh, from attacking him, specifically Hippolytus of Rome, uh, who accused Pope Zephyrinus of being too soft against heresy. Uh, and so it's like you just can't win. People are always going to complain. In fact, uh, um, uh, Pope or, um, Hippolytus of Rome uh, eventually would have himself elected pope. He was the very first anti-pope. Um, he would eventually convert, actually, and become a martyr himself. So the first anti-pope in the church uh, also became a saint. Uh, but that just shows that, right, even among the saints, there can be great contention and great uh, difficulty. Uh, but Pope Zephyrinus, uh, very uh, zealous for the faith, very firm in the defense of the faith. And also, an interesting story of him is that he received back into the church uh, one of his bishops who had joined an apostate sect but who had had a series of visions warning him, warning that bishop, you need to return to the faith, you need to return to the church. Uh, the bishop just dismissed these visions as, you know, uh, fantasies. Uh, but finally, one night, it wasn't just a vision, an angel appeared to him and whipped him uh, all night long. And the next morning, uh, this bishop drags himself before Pope Zephyrinus and says, okay, I guess they weren't just visions after all, and, and re recanted of his heresy, and Zephyrinus received him with great kindness. Um, and nevertheless, it was uh, the sorrow of uh, Pope Zephyrinus to witness the fall of Tertullian. Anybody who studied church histories knows Tertullian is one of the fathers of the church, but he himself succumbed to the heresy of Montanism. Uh, so after uh, 17 years of great defense of the faith, uh, Pope Zephyrinus died in 219, uh, and he was not, interestingly enough, he was not, um, he was not a blood martyr. He did not actually give his life, shed his blood for the faith. And yet the church celebrates him as a martyr. That I'm wearing red, right, symbolizing blood, which Pope Zephyrinus didn't give. So why? Uh, this is a good example of the church's um, teaching of a white martyrdom. A white martyrdom is those who, uh, throughout life, although they didn't give their life literally for Christ, uh, they gave their life to Christ every day, every day in difficult circumstances, through persecutions, humiliations, sufferings, setbacks, sorrows, trials, hardships. They endured everything for the sake of Christ. And from the example of their life, it's obvious they would have given their life uh, for Christ. And so Zephyrinus is uh, um, uh, honored as a martyr, uh, even though he didn't actually die for Christ as many others did. Uh, and that is a great comfort, I, I say, especially to homeschooling moms of large families. You have that martyrdom, that constant daily struggle. Don't lose sight of the fact uh, your sufferings have value and, and great, great benefit. Uh, you too can benefit from that white martyrdom. Uh, so our second saint for today, uh, St. Genesius, uh, comedian. Uh, he was the lead actor in a comedy routine for the Emperor Diocletian in the year 286. And he had gotten it into his head to ridicule the Christian religion by performing a mock baptism ceremony. However, this, well, you, you could say it backfired, but it was to his benefit. 
uh, this comedian, St. Genesius, studied the baptismal rites. He studied what the church taught. He studied it. And then during the ceremony, during the, in the amphitheater with the, the emperor there and all the witnesses, uh, he's going through this mock baptismal ceremony, and he believes. He actually believes. And then he asks the other actor, uh, in, in, he's supposed to ask him in jest. The, the, the actor playing the priest says, what do you wish? Pope Genesius says, seriously, I wish to be baptized with the faith of the Christians. And then the minute the water is poured over his head, he sees a vision of the angels. And he sees them with a book of his sins, and they plunge it into, into the baptismal waters, and they bring it out, and it's, it's clean, white as snow. And so uh, the, the play continues, and Genesius is in this, this incredible, uh, uh, having this vision. And then he's finally brought before the emperor, and he's supposed to, you know, as a concluding act of the play, ridicule and mock the faith. Uh, but he says instead... Here, O Emperor, and all you present, officers of the army, philosophers, senators, and people, I have never so much as heard the name of Christian without being struck with horror, and I detested my very own relations if they professed that religion. However, whilst I was washed with the water and examined, I had no sooner answered sincerely that I believed. Uh, I advise you, great and mighty emperor, and all here present, believe with me Jesus Christ is the true Lord, that he is the light and the truth, and through him you may obtain forgiveness of your sins. Nobody laughed. This was not how the, 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 the comedy was supposed to end. He had, had taken it way too seriously. Uh, so the emperor was not amused, had him thrown in prison, beaten, tortured, uh, and Genesius remained constant in his faith. There is no other Lord of the universe besides him whom I have seen. Him I adore, him I serve, and to him I will adhere. Though I suffer a thousand deaths for his sake, no torments shall remove Jesus Christ from my heart and mouth. I regret exceedingly my former errors, uh, and that I once detested his holy name and came so late to his service. Finding that no amount of agony would induce St. Genesius to yield the faith, he was beheaded in the year 303. Uh, thus the end of St. Genesius, comedian and martyr. Now, this is where I go off script. Have you all heard recently in the entertainment news that Shia LaBeouf has converted to Catholicism? Yeah, he was in the transform. He's been an A-list actor, right, for, for years. And he converts. Why? Because he was cast for the role of a movie on Padre Pio. And when you look, they kind of look pretty similar, actually. He gets decked out in a beard. And so he studies. What does Shia LaBeouf do? Shia LaBeouf, comedian, actor, performer, studies the truths of the Catholic faith, and he converts, just like St. Genesius. This has been happening for 2,000 years, is when people actually study the faith, they convert. And I, 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 I know there's other examples of actors this has happened to. I can't think of their names offhand. But this is not, it's uncommon, but it isn't surprising. That when you study the truth, you become convinced. And interestingly enough, there's this interview with Bishop Barron and Shia LaBeouf. And, and, and Shia mentions, because what converted him? What mass did he study for that role? He studied the traditional mass. And he'd been to Nova Sorda Masses before. And, and Shia says to, to Bishop Barron, he says, I don't want to get controversial. I know this is a big deal. And then he like blows the controversy out of the water. He just steps right into it. And he says, you know the difference I felt going to the traditional Mass? Uh, you know, the, the difference is I, I felt like when I went to Nova Sorda, and I don't know if he used these terms, but he says, I felt like they were trying to sell me something. And I didn't get that with the traditional mass. I felt like I was just there and I was being let in on a secret. They were sharing something with me, not trying to get me, not trying to force me into something. And if you look at it, I think, you know, and I don't blame, I don't, I don't, this is not in a beef with the Novus Order either, right? What I blame are the, are, are the men in the church 60 years ago who didn't know what the faith was. It's a sad fact, but we have to accept it. I, I'm thinking of the words of Daniel when they're carried off into Babylon. And the prophet Daniel says, we have sinned and our fathers before us. We have all sinned. And that is true. But he doesn't, he doesn't exonerate the, 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 the Jewish fathers that, that caused it to happen. 
they sinned, they neglected your word. And it's okay to admit when that has happened. And that happened 60 years ago. When these men who didn't understand psychology or human nature, they were swept up in the wave of the future like everybody else was in the 50s and 60s. And they mistook what was happening at Mass. And we hear these three things. We want full, act, uh, was it, um, full active conscious participation. And they made a mistake. They settled for universal external participation. They wanted full participation. Everybody should be participating. Guess what? You can't force everybody to participate. Some people aren't going to do it. They're just not. They're not paying attention. And you can't force that to happen. But they tried. And they settled for universal. Everybody's going to participate. How? We're going to make you participate externally. You're going to stand. You're going to sit. We're going to say this. You're going to say that. There's going to be a constant back and forth dialogue in the mass. And that looks like active participation. What is it? External participation. You can get somebody going to mass who is entirely occupied from the start to the finish in standing, sitting, kneeling, saying, responding. And they don't have a clue what they're doing. They didn't think a thing about it. That is always going to happen. You cannot force internal active participation. You have to invite. You have to entice. You have to encourage. And that was the mistake they made 60 years ago. They wanted to see it. You're never going to see that. And you can't make it happen if it isn't there. So that is what Shia LaBeouf, when he converted, that's what he was getting at. That's what he was noticing is that there is a certain kind of truth. There's a certain power you can't fake. And he knows that because he's an actor. And he said that he's one of those immersion actors. You know, if you, if you get a line, and, and, and he, they told him, you need to have an Italian accent for the movie. And he said, I'm too far gone. If I put on the accent, it wouldn't be genuine. I'm feeling Padre Pio, like he was there. When he, he's, he's been cast as gangsters, and all, he shows up, he puts on the chains, he goes out and he finds a bunch of gangster friends and, and hangs out with them for weeks and weeks and weeks. So he gets it. He doesn't act a part, he becomes the part. That's what he does. And that's what is going to save his soul. He became a traditional Catholic priest. And, and he, had to, he had to do the Mass. He had to study the Mass because he had to play saying the Mass. And he was affected, greatly affected, when he was practicing the Mass. And he said, you know what? You know what encourages? You know what gets full, active, conscious participation? Is when the priest is a saint. When the priest feels it, when the priest knows what he's doing and that God is there, then the people are drawn along with him. And that's what we should be praying for, is holy priests. Uh, Pope Zephyrinus and St. Gelasius, pray for us. God bless you all. In the name of the Father, Son, and Thank you for listening. Please remember to click subscribe and to hit the bell for notifications. And in this age of censorship, please consider helping support us at sensefidelium.com. Under the Donate and Support tab, there are plenty of ways to help support the work and to help grow and sustain the efforts of Census Fidelium in general. May God reward you and thank you very much.